Hi guys, so for my author review, I chose an author who I think is probably the most popular in children's literature. I think it's probably the person that we all think of the most, or at least it's the person I think of the most, and that would be Dr. Seuss. His full name was Theodore Seuss Giselle, and he was born on March 2nd, 1904 in Springfield, Massachusetts. He died on September 24th, 1991 in California. Dr. Seuss is famous for many, many different works, but some of the most popular include The Cat in the Hat, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and Green Eggs and Ham. His works were always very whimsical and fun. The characters were always probably things that aren't necessarily your normal run-of-the-mill character, like a Lorax and things like that. But I think one of the most fascinating things about his works is they've been published in more than 20 different languages. And so to think about the time span that he was writing in and to think about how popular his books still are, I think that's kind of crazy. Throughout his career, though, Dr. Seuss kind of stopped writing. During World War II, he switched sides to a more political agenda in his writing. He wasn't focused on children's literature, and that was something I didn't know prior to this. I didn't know that kind of like children's literature wasn't his focus during that time, but... Obviously, there were other things going on, and he chose to express himself differently. Um, Theodore Giselle attended Dartmouth, and he was able to graduate in 1925. After attending school there, he decided to attend Oxford, where he would um, be getting his doctorate in English literature. However, while he was there, things didn't really go as planned. He had always been doodling and coming up with these great drawings. And so there was somebody that encouraged him to explore his passion and not necessarily explore this route of typical go to school, study English, become a teacher, that kind of thing. And that was Helen Palmer. Helen Palmer later goes on to become his wife. So I think that's kind of cool that she's the reason he pretty much discovered his passion and changed career paths and they ended up being together so that's neat um he didn't achieve a doctorate but he ultimately earned an honorary doctorate from dartmouth in 1956 so finally his title that he had put on his books all these years was accurate and he truly was a doctor at that point um when helen palmer died Dr. Seuss got married a year later, and his new wife didn't even realize who he was. She didn't know. She thought he was a medical doctor. And so that's kind of crazy to be that famous to us now, but in the times, he wasn't nearly as famous, so that's interesting. Um, he began writing children's literature specifically because it wasn't constrained by his advertising contract whenever he worked for Life magazine and was publishing advertisements for them. But whenever it came time that he was ready to publish a work of his own, he had gotten rejected by nearly 30 publishers before finding somebody who was willing to publish his first book. So anytime you're feeling discouraged, you're feeling like things aren't necessarily going your way, we can just think, well, Dr. Seuss failed 30 times. And now he, as of 2010, I think, was added to a list of the 100 people who changed the world that we live in today. And so that's kind of crazy to think about and to think about what really can affect you and what really can change the path that you're on. That first book that he published was called And to Think I Saw It on Mulberry Street. And it was actually based on a real street that he grew up around where he grew up on. And so I think that's really neat that those elements, there are some like factual elements to it. In 1939, though, um, Seuss released a book for adults, and it didn't do so well. It actually had nude women pictured in it, which I think is super weird to think about somebody who's been writing children's literature and then publishes an adult book with nude drawings in it. But ultimately, that didn't go well, and that's when he decided to stick to children's literature for the duration of his career, because children were ultimately who he wanted to appeal to anyway, because him and his wife were unable to have children. And like I said, there are several key elements in his books, and some of that is the rhyming and the word choice, and really the main characters are always kind of whimsical and unrealistic, so to speak, like the cat and the cat in the hat, and the Lorax and those kinds of things. I thought it was really interesting to read about his writing process also. You see these books now and we look back at them and we're like, wow, that's like crazy. 
what he was able to create, but he would often throw away between 500 and 1,000 pages during a first draft. And so if the book only has 50 words, like one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish does, that is a lot of edits. And so I think that's interesting. The last book that was published by Dr. Seuss during his life was Oh, the Places You'll Go. And it's now known as kind of like a graduation stepping stone book that a lot of people get for graduations and just when they're in a new chapter of their life, that kind of thing. Uh, as far as awards go, Dr. Seuss was the first person to win a Pulitzer for writing a children's book. He has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He won a Peabody Award for several of his nomination animations. And in 2010, he was added to a list of 100 people who changed the world. So that's awesome. One of the most popular books that I think of when I think of Dr. Seuss, especially this time of year, is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And it is probably a book that almost everybody has read or heard about or seen a snippet of on TV, that kind of thing. But it's been remade several times into a TV special and a movie over the years. And I think the most recent publishing of a movie for the Grinch was in 2000. That edition of the movie actually won 18 awards and was nominated for 37. And although that wasn't necessarily something Dr. Seuss did, it's based on something that he wrote and the plot is something that he came up with. So I think that's awesome. Even 60 years later, we're still making new renditions of this book. And so that's just how historical I think the things that he wrote are and how applicable they are even in our times now. Um, for my read aloud, I want to read One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. A fun fact about this book is that it started off as a bet. He bet somebody at the publishing house that he couldn't write a book with less than 50 words. It was just a $50 bet and he was able to do it. So I think that's kind of funny. So One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish by Dr. Seuss. One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. Black fish, blue fish, old fish, new fish. This one has a little star. This one has a little car. Say what a lot of fish there are. Yes, some are red and some are blue. Some are old and some are new. Some are sad and some are very, very bad. Why are they? Sad and glad and bad? I do not know. Go ask your dad. Some are thin and some are fat. The fat one has a yellow hat. From there to here, from here to there, funny things are everywhere. Here are some who like to run. They run for fun in the hot, hot sun. Oh me, oh my, oh me, oh my. What a lot of funny things go by. Some have two feet and some have four. Some have six feet and some have more. Where do they come from? I can't say. But I bet they come a long, long way. We see them come, we see them go. Some are fast and some are slow. Some are high and some are low. Not one of them is like another. Don't ask us why. Go ask your mother. Say... Look at his fingers. One, two, three. How many fingers do I see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He has eleven. Eleven. This is something new. I wish I had eleven too. And the book continues for several more pages, but that is the basic gist of it. Um, and in the whole book, there's no more than 50 words, which seems kind of crazy when you're reading through it. But if you think about it, a lot of the words are repetitive, and so that does make sense. For the activity, I actually want my activity to incorporate this book. That's why I wanted to read it. And I think that it's a good activity for beginning level students. And so you get them a template with different colors on them and different numbers. And so anytime the year is a green fish, an orange fish, a red fish, or a yellow fish, all the different colors of fish that are presented in the pictures in the book, you have them color in a little box with that crown based on what color fish they saw in there. So there's a column for each color. And so then they can also color it in as well. And so by the end of the book, after they've spotted all the fish in the story, you'll have them add up the numbers and get a total for it. And so it's a good way to practice um, interactive reading. And so that way they're really understanding it. And also it gives them the chance to do a little bit of math as well. So that is my summary. Overall, I think that Dr. Seuss did a lot to change the way that we look at children's literature. And I think that he is a very important author for kids to know and to read and to learn about. Thanks.